Recently, I've been seeing a lot of negative comments and videos on the Hallett Mage and Mage Pro 8K resin printer. Even on Amazon, it's only 3.8 stars. And I find this mind-blowing. I mean, come on, it's 8K and costs under $300. So I decided to get my hands on one and see if it's actually bad or if it's super underrated. And before we get to the details, take a quick look at these results and tell me if they look disappointing to you. The details are insane. It had some problems and I'll get to them soon and explain who should get this printer and who should avoid it. But let's take a closer look at the parts, specs and setup first. Just cut this area, lift it, lift the foam, connect the machine and voila! The Halot Mage has a 10.3 inch LCD monochrome screen and a build volume of 9 by 5 by 9 inches, which is not bad. And with 8K quality and these build dimensions, it means you're gonna get a definition of 29 microns. Any 8K printer under 30 microns is considered good. It's so small you can barely see it, but it's great to show fine details on clothing and hair. To get a grasp of how fine the details are, if you look at this screen, it has a total precision of a whopping 33 million pixels. Curing power and time per layer vary between 1 to 5 seconds based on what resin you're using. But based on my experience, using the Sunlu and the Creality resins, the best exposure time for me was 2.5 seconds. The build plate is one of the easiest to adjust, because you just loosen the 4 bolts, bring the bed down onto a sheet of paper, and then just tighten the bolts and you're good to go. The VAT is standard, you loosen the bolts, lift it up with the handles to move it around. I would have preferred if it had a standalone handle here. As for the FEP, it does the job, it's the standard one, but I had a couple of instances with the prints getting stuck to the FEP sheet instead of the build plate. There are a couple of solutions for this, like increasing your first layer burn time, tightening the FEP sheet, or adding some 3-in-1 oil to the FEP sheet before you add your resin. What's nice is that Creality provide you with an extra sheet that you can change if needed. And something you cannot miss on this printer is the enclosure box. It's a very slick idea Creality had to have this rotate upwards, just like a Lamborghini. But yeah, because of this, I don't have to slowly carefully lift the box up and place it somewhere random all the time. It just stands. I do what I need then instantly close it again. Another feature the Hallet Mage has is the pipeline that you attach to it to extrude the fumes out of it in a more secure way. I have a nice place for it where I just slot it out of the window and although just opening a window is good enough, when I use this vent system, I don't smell any fumes at all. So let's start slicing and printing. It doesn't get any easier to prepare a machine for printing than this. Just plug in your USB they provide Stick it into your device, open the free Lychee software, Architobux or Creality software, add a printer, resin printer, type Hallet Mage, select it, and you're good to go. The basic settings are going to be more than enough to get you started, and then you can go to the edit area and fine tune them as you go. Since the machine is capable of 30 microns, make sure you select that. The more details you want to add to your model, the longer it's going to take to print. But what's the point in getting an 8K printer if you're not going to fully utilize its full potential? Next, just find or create the stuff you want to slice and export them into the USB drive as is. Lychee automatically chooses the file type needed based on the printer selected. Insert it back into the printer where the slot is in the front side which is very user friendly. Click on print, select the file and of course make sure you have enough resin in your vat and let the machine do its job. Easy peasy. When it's over, turn this screw to take the bed out. Use the epic metal scraper Creality provides. Clean everything up. Remove the supports. And there you have it. Some high quality prints. Here is the Amerilabs test done on both Creality and Sunlu resin. And here are some zoom ins. 
The checker area is looking great. You can see all the core details here, here and here. We have Puck the Adventurer. Looking sharp. Peely from Fortnite. This guy's got a personality. And a couple of characters from arch villain games. Like Irisenshi, the Mad Warrior. And Jinja Obake, the half turned demon. Right now you must be thinking, is it really $300? Where's the link? Links can be found in the description below. And just so you know, I've been testing a bunch of different Resonant like Creality, Sunlu, Elugu and Nova 3D and they're all great. But Sunlu caught my eye because you get a lot of quantity for low prices and it's still producing great results. So you should check it out. And if you're interested in the process of painting these characters, mention it in the comments. If there's enough interest, I can tell you exactly what you need to get to paint like a boss. A quick note, this printer also has a clean vat option, which I've used a couple of times already. It's pretty handy and easy to remove. Just go to tools, clean and hit confirm. It's safer to push the bottom of the FEP gently to loosen it up and then gently lift it with a plastic scraper. Some final features are testing the exposure to make sure there aren't any missing pixels, a stop button and a manual control to adjust the build plate height. So the things that stand out in this machine are the price, the extra FEP sheet and the high quality details. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the cons. One, as I mentioned earlier, the prints might stick too well to the FEP sheet. Two, the legs aren't adjustable. So if you're on an unleveled surface, you'll have to fix that, otherwise half your prints won't come out right. And three, there are no holders on the vat, making it a little annoying to handle when removing it from the printer. So who should avoid this machine? Anyone who doesn't have patience, doesn't like doing any DIY fixes, or has a big budget to get a printer at a high price range. If that's you, then you might want to subscribe and check the next video I'm making on an Elegoo 8K resin printer. But if you like the idea of getting the biggest bang for your buck, spending so little to get such a great quality printer, then I suggest you subscribe and get the Halot Mage 8K. Personally, if I had only $300 and had to choose one printer, it would most likely be this one. And that's it from my side. I'm curious, when you get a 3D printer, what are the things that you're going to create? Mention them in the comments below and have a great day.